Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the weekly landscape update video that Steph and I have been doing here all season long in Raleigh, North Carolina Zone 7B. Here we are in the middle of September and a lot of this color is um, slowly fading away at this point. Although there are a lot of things that are, that are actually just coming into, into flower as well. We're, so we're probably gonna start skipping weeks as we go forward uh, until something substantial actually changes in the landscape or the all the when the camellias all start opening back up or start opening up and other fall blooming things uh, so expect a, a little bit of a break now uh, in these because the season is slowing down uh, the dr rupal clematis which is the first of the three clematis on the front gate that was planted last um this one was planted last year the other two were planted um this year but it has continued to uh flower uh, it's tucked away down between a couple rocks that were placed inside the fence there. Uh, keep in mind, clematis like their feet cool uh, and the tops, you know, in the sun. And uh, there's a lot of plants like that, especially a lot of vining plants that are like that. They, they, grow, they germinate down in the forest floor and then they race up to the top to get into the sun. So clematis definitely fall into that category. The uh, white fruited or white bearing calicarpa it's just on full display at this point. I expect uh, some birds to find these at some point pretty soon and start cleaning them out, but they are just absolutely loaded. This thing grows about three feet in a single season, so it'll get cut down in the winter about three, three and a half feet lower than it is now, and then come back to about the same height. May even go a little lower than that, so it doesn't get quite as, as tall next year. And the annual border here in the middle is really starting to wind down. And so anything that the pollinators are no longer able to kind of take advantage of, we'll pull out of the ground, but we'll leave anything here that they're still on every afternoon. Sliding around to the uh, front of the fence, the white butterfly towers is now in peak bloom again. Uh, Steph came out here and pruned it maybe three or four weeks ago. Uh, it had, it, you can come out here and choose to just kind of deadhead them you know, as the, as they fade, but it seems like such a lot, you know, it seems like a lot of work. So just coming out here and shearing the whole thing, you know, at one time allows it to just come back in full bloom like it is now. And you can see there are bees all over it. We've scared off the butterflies that were on it before we, uh, before we started filming. The front entryway uh, into the gate still looks, uh, still looks great. Still a lot of color out here, but again, some things are starting to fade. The perennials will let die back to the ground before we cut them and clean them up and uh, remulch at that point. Uh, aster back here is finally in, the, in, in, in full flower. But the annual things, as they start fading, they're gonna come out pretty quickly. I think we're, we're at the point now where we're ready to get this kind of ready for pansies and fall blooming things and just kind of clean it up and get a look at the ground again, honestly, around some of these shrubs and um, you know, the, some of the permanent pe features uh, of the landscape and, uh, and, and kind of see it, you know, as the bones of the, of the garden again. Uh, coming up here, another one of these asters that the rabbits pruned up <laughs> into in the little tree forms here. Uh, it's, in, it's in full bloom. The caryopteris on the other side of the fence right behind it is the same color, uh, lavender purple back there. Uh, it's also still not in full bloom, but it's, it's getting there. There's a bee a bee on it that I can see. We're shooting this about 5.30, 6 o'clock in the evening, and there are still a lot of bees out here, but they've definitely, you know, this is about the time of day that they start they start going home. Uh, and then uh, one of the uh, anemones out here by the, uh, by the street is still really uh, putting on a show. Uh, every time I think this thing's about to slow down, it figures out a way to throw up a new, some new buds and, and, and keeps opening new ones. Holly's standing here in front of some of the uh, vinca that we've shown a several times during the summer, but you can see they're just bigger and bigger and bigger. This has just been a great year, great year for them. Uh, they're, you know, well out here onto the, uh, to the sidewalk at this point. Not great for the pollinators, like we've talked about. The celosia, see this little annual bed here that normally looks terrific and did most of the season. Now everything's kind of stretched here at the end of the season, but the celosia is still the the bees at the bumblebees, there are some of our native bees, absolute favorite out here, or one of their favorites. And so we'll leave those, even though they don't look all that great for a few more weeks. And But some of the zinnias back here and melon podium and other, some of the other things are slowing down. They'll come on out. And uh, again, 
we'll wait for the perennials like this salvia uh, to, to die back. We'll wait for the a frost to take them down to the ground before we do anything on those. And same, same thing over here on this side. Just, you know, as good as these raspberry ripples any as look, um, we're kind of at ready at this point. Um, we're, not, we're not far from, from pulling them once, they, once these nighttime temperatures get a little lower and they start to slow down, they'll get erased out of there pretty quickly. We can get this turf re-edged, uh, get any weeds that are in there that have escaped us during the season, because I'm sure there's a few up under there, and uh, rescue the shrubs um, that are in there and then get it mulched. We'll wait for the uh, leaves to fall uh, out here off of everything and then we'll mulch at that point so the leaves don't end up on top of our new uh, clean mulch. We talked about the celosia that had self-seeded itself from a, a flower arrangement that was just thrown over uh, last year, but now, uh, you know, two or weeks later since we've shown it, they're now eight feet tall and there's, the flowers are, are bigger than they were when I talked about them not being great at flowering, but they're still not great at flowering in comparison to the uh, other varieties we have in the landscape. But the foliage is quite, Beautiful, it's got this purple purple piece in the middle. The pollinators love them just like they do the rest of them, but uh, it's eight feet tall at this point. I think maybe last November, uh, we put up a video on a bunch of dwarf conifers that we planted in the landscape. Uh, this one is a Thuja orientalis called uh, Frankie Boy. Uh, it was in that video and it's done pretty well this year, about what you'd expect from a little dwarf, you know, a little uh, conifer in its first season in the ground. These were little four inch pots, all of these were. so. Not impressive yet, but it's on its way. It's very healthy, and that's true of pretty much everything that was in that video. Uh, is looking good, but it's currently surrounded by annuals, perennials, other fly, you know, flowering things that have taken over the beds over the course of the summer. Once we get, once we get all of these things sorted, you know, pulled out, get everything remulched, we'll go back through and show you all the conifers uh, in the landscape in a single video, and we'll probably add a few more uh, this fall as well. So one big thing that's happened in the garden this past week is the Osmanthus fragrance are uh, opening some flowers already. I, I knew one day earlier this week, I took the uh, Griffin and Holly for a walk and I was like, wow, it's, it's actually quite cool this morning. And as soon as that happens, as soon as you get a couple cool nights, the Osmanthus uh, flowers start opening up. And so uh, this one is now about probably a little over eight feet tall that Steph has the camera trained on. You can see all the flower buds there, uh, all those little white flowers. The entire back garden is full of Osmanthus fragrance, fragrance, fragrance uh, right now, which is quite strong. It's amazing how, I mean, you can, and it's so unique. It's one of those fragrances you can just, you know it before you, you, you don't have to know where the, it, you don't have to know it's Osmanthus fragrance. You can just be walking down the street um, and, 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 and identify it by its unique fragrance. It's fantastic. It's an uh, evergreen border plant here. And we're in zone 7B. I think that these can be uh, get nipped in the wintertime without some protection, but these are, these are, these are being offered good protection. Uh, down here below me, we haven't shown the Brigadoon uh, St. John's wort hardly at all this entire season. Uh, it lost a little bit of color during that June heat when it was uh, up in the, uh, upper 90s, lower 100s, but here toward the end of the season, again, as the nights have gotten cooler, you see the growth on it now is all bright, bright yellow. These will get cut to the ground, honestly, with the lawnmower or weed eater, doesn't matter what it is, toward March, but they'll look like this all winter. Then toward March, um, we'll cut them down to rejuvenate them again. Hopefully we won't have another 100 degree week next year, um, but it, did de it definitely took a little of the color out of them this season. Right here in front of the camera, the autumn lily, Encore Azalea has started uh, opening a few flowers here. There's, um, this one's in a little more shade than it would like to be in, but it's still a good looking plant. But there's buds on the, on the end of every one of these branches and uh, won't be long before it's in full flower. And then the one in the container back here, uh, that's Autumn Bonfire, it'll also be blooming soon. It's a, it's a red. Some of the annual borders still look really great you know, right here with the, uh, uh, the New Guinea and Patient and uh, the Pentas, uh, the Angelonia. Most of this still looks pretty good, although the Angelonia has just about quit on us uh, now. It might be time to collect some seed and go ahead and pull those out. You can see the palm in the ground back here. It got put in the ground uh, during this season uh, from a container. And there's a, 
a couple different sedums uh, planted underneath it. But I think that border still looks good, and it, it'll, it, it'll, it won't be on the chopping block for another week or two. Vegetable garden over here, the direct seeded things are well up uh, at this point, and that's carrots and beets and uh, what else is over there, Steph, uh, that got seeded? There's radishes, radishes peas, Spinach, peas, peas uh, Swiss, chard. Swiss chard. So the direct seeded things are up over there and collards. So the direct seeded things are up and anchored in the ground. They probably need a bit of thinning. Uh, the seed were pretty close together, so they're gonna have to be uh, thinned out a bit. And all the things that you saw in the video where we, we did the fall vegetable seeding, all that stuff is up. And so here's the, uh, the butter crunch lettuce, which is probably my favorite. I mean, look, you can just eat it right here, out of, right out of the tray. There's a lettuce called wild, uh, wildfire in there that's really, really terrific. There's some more Swiss chard that we'll use for containers um, and hopefully get some size on them in, in the ground uh, over the course of the winter. And there's broccoli and other things. This stuff's going in right now. It's finally, it's finally ready, but you can see I can pull, you know, I can pull this little plug, pull this little plug out of there. See how great that looks. Again, these can be direct seeded, but I can't produce, I still produce a better plant uh, inside, starting it from seed under the light and then bringing it out here in the sun for a week and let it harden off and then stick it in the ground. And I always feel like I'm a little ahead of the game uh, doing it that way. I think we showed the Beijing Beauty Mahonia maybe two weeks ago and it was just starting to flower again. And so I wanted to show it one more time here, almost in peak flower, bees all over that thing all day long. Uh, it's an incredible amount of flowers and it will just flower on and off all winter. This thing has flowered, it probably flowered six of the last 12 months. It's just kind of amazing, and you, you see, yeah, there's a, there's, there's a bee still on it there. Um, see more honeybees than anything else on these, uh, on these Mahonia, typically. Uh, they absolutely love them, and uh, you know, great texture plant. Haven't, haven't pruned that thing at all. It's two and a half feet tall and three feet wide. Nothing's been done to it. The emerald uh, snow Laura Petalum, which I have a video on the channel for, is uh, starting to starting to reflower. It got moved. It was behind where I'm actually standing. Got moved during the middle of summer. We didn't even mention it. It wilted for a couple weeks in the summer heat. And uh, being a Laura Petalum, it quickly settled back in and not only has grown, but is now flowering again. But that, I do like that Emerald Snow Dwarf Laura Petalum. And heavy, heavy flowering in the spring and then some residual flowers here in the fall. And that white really pops on there. Here's a few of the, uh, the dahlias. There's some named dahlia varieties out here in the landscape. And then there's a lot that we do from seed. The majority, vast majority are from seed in the house. And, and there's one of them. And you, you're now looking at some more of them. Um, while I uh, continue, we collect, we'll collect the seed on these dahlias in the next week or two, three weeks, something like that. And then we get big surprises uh, every year on you know, what we'll have, you know, from the seedlings from next year. We may actually be able to get enough seed at some point to maybe perhaps sell some of it, I don't know. I, I, I would like to uh, share some of the seed that we have, um, that our bees have hybridized uh, out here at some point with you guys. So there you go. Uh, there is the last of the weekly uh, landscape tours here for a little while. Uh, again, we'll do other updates. There's some a lot of things actually here that need to go in the ground and you guys will see those things go in the ground. And then once we get to the point where camellias are in flower or something really you know, um, substantial happens here in the landscape, we'll shoot another one of these. Once the annuals are out, again, we leave our leaves in place here, but I don't want to mulch until after those leaves have come down. Just you know, from a neatness standpoint, um, I'd like to seal those leaves right on top of the ground. The oak back here on the back line, which is, I don't know how tall that thing is, 80 plus feet tall. Uh, it actually puts too many leaves back there. So we'll take some of those and spread them in other places in the landscape and then mulch them all in uh, at that point. You'll see that this fall. Thanks for following along.